Hi, this is Farrell. Welcome to my video and YouTube channel and all that. Um, today I'm doing this Robot Todd page seven, and I'm showing this is a page from my sketchbook, a spread from my sketchbook, and there's a couple drawings I did last week as I was working on the previous page. I got an idea of like, oh, I want. I was trying to think of how the Sept character could join in on them, like roller skating and skateboarding and all that. So. I uh, just did a couple quick drawings in my sketchbook, and I, I liked the drawings enough to where I was like, I'm gonna, I'm just going to try to lightboard those onto the page. And uh, you can see on the left there, I had some thumbnails that I'd worked out. And here's like my lightboard setup, and I, uh, I had to actually cut the page out of my sketchbook, and I, I taped it back in afterwards. But um, I even the little, the little panel there in the corner of them like grasping hands. I like saw I was trying I most of the panels in this in this comic are just the four panel grid but I was thinking you know looking at my sketchbook I was like oh I want that uh the hand grab part to be in there too so I just did a little inset panel and the way I've been doing these borders too I haven't been using a pen to rule them out I've just been using pencil so I go in after I've watercolored them and add the pencil it's kind of weird because the the uh word balloons and stuff I do with a brush or the ink pen one of the two um but the panel borders I just left blank it's just sort of something I started doing in the first issue and, and I'm going to continue it until the end of the series whenever that is so yeah I'm still kind of penciling here this the reason this page took me a little longer to do than some of the previous pages is normally I can get one of these done in a week but um and I just do like maybe like an hour after after dinner, I, I work on it. Um, but I, I did a lot of, uh, in the pencil stage, I did, you can see here, I'm rewriting the dialogue as I'm going. And I kept having to do different variations and trying to decide how I wanted it to, how I wanted it to go. So I spent a few more sessions penciling than I normally would. Um, cause some of the pages with less dialogue, like the action scenes and stuff, those actually go faster than than like pages like this where I'm trying to do like a few things in like one panel. Um, uh, these these pages actually, were, there's not really a lot of backgrounds going on, just basically in the last panel, there's a little bit of a background. Um, and I drew that sort of amorphous monster creature in the previous page once and was like, oh, I, that, the painting went pretty easy. So uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird thing to start because it, it, it just as like a rough shape. It's just like this big blobby monster and it lo doesn't look like anything. And it's kind of interesting to see sort of like just kind of focusing on different little areas that see it kind of taking shape there. Um, there's like a close up of it there. But, um, yeah, so uh, here I'm kind of getting into the inking stage. And what I started to do is like, I usually do the lettering first and I've just been using one of those fabric Castile pit pens to do the lettering. And, um, and so as I was doing the lettering, I started just to kind of use the same pen to, to ink some of the <laughs> figures and stuff. Uh, and then after that session was over, I went, I went back in with my brush and actually started doing some of the lines, the majority of it with this, uh, the Raphael 8404. And I switched from a number four to a number two. I was using a number three for a while, but it just it seems like the smaller brush, it's just easier to get like the type of detail I want. But um, this brush is actually kind of worn out anyway. I need to get a new one. So yeah, in addition to me just developing this idea of like Robot Todd lifting up Sept, like negating the gravity so that Sept can ride on the suitcase, like he just with one hand and he can use the roller skates to propel them. Uh, I also, uh, I, th I think fresh as I was doing this, uh, came up with that idea of him like just kind of popping up a map of the place i think i had something loosely written i'd basically write down a script or beats in the uh notes app on my phone and then i edit these videos all in i i movie on my phone too so it's like kind of all in one place but um and then i you know look at the notes when i'm making thumbnails and then uh so as i in somewhere in that process i had the idea of like fern asking robot todd to pull up a map and then it was just a matter with the dialogue, just kind of keep refining the lettering, refining and refining until it get to the exact uh, most concise way of saying this thing and still moving the action along without them too much like 
I tend to, when I write uh, dialogue, it's like too conversational or something a lot of times. And it's like, oh yeah, they'd be running. So they probably wouldn't have time for like a big conversation. (laughs) Um, So yeah, there, there I have a a thing that kind of happens off camera of the, the fox, Wilder, just kind of disappearing. And uh, I thought it it should happen because I I'd actually would have liked a page where to add a page where the the fox disappears. But um, just the way I was working out this page, I was just like, I'm just going to stick it in here kind of off camera because we're kind of watching this sort of stunt thing happen where where Todd is picking up Sept. And then uh, so I, I just thought like, oh, just to remind the reader or whatever of who that Wilder is, um, even though I said it on the previous page, I just put a little fox head in the word balloon, and that's something I've been doing with this comic a lot, is adding little little uh, faces and things to word balloons, and kind of using them as panels almost, in, in the same way as a panel. <laughs> or not in the same way, but uh, yeah, it's just sort of like another way to, to read read a panel is just like symbols and, and like Todd's whole thing too is or not his whole thing but one of the aspects to him um to the to robot Todd is that uh is like projecting these images above his head like almost like emojis or something but he he can talk you know he can like express himself verbally and audibly and stuff but um that just seems to be like the preferred method of just using symbols and stuff but um I hear it looks like maybe this was like the second to last session I just finished it last night, um, and I think this is the the stage right before I just put on the finishing touches, or maybe next to the next stage, because it looks like Wilder hasn't even been colored yet, so um, it, this might this might be the last session here, and uh, yeah, this was just a matter of, I kind of start different ways each time. Usually, if I'm doing Robot Todd's on the page, I'd start with the yellow, because it's like, I know he's going to have that yellow stripe down you know down the front of his head or the back of his head too but just the stripe on his head and the stripe on his sleeves and legs and torso uh so i just kind of go in each panel and add that i usually do not every time but i usually start with that sometimes i start with a face like oh that seems fun to color that face or sometimes if i really like a drawing and like oh i'm curious to see what that looks like colored i'll go in with that first um and it's what I might have done too with the that first little panel. I might have started coloring that first too. But the the background part, doing the washes of blue, that's always the biggest. I guess if there's like a drag or a part that I'm kind of like in, a little fearful about, it's usually that, like laying on big fields of color or trying to get in like little nooks and crannies and having it look even. But whenever I start doing it, it's like, oh, this is fine. I've done this enough times. I know what I'm doing here. I don't have anything to worry about. But it's just still kind of. I know what that is, where it's just like, ah, I hope I don't mess this up too bad or make it muddy or whatever. Um, but yeah, so once once I get like those parts in, the, the rest is just kind of a matter of like, okay, what's gray in this picture? I, you know, like, oh, his, Sep suit's gray is gray, Fern suit's gray, and so I just kind of go in and color all those all those things, and then usually do like you know try to do like flesh tones and or animal tones whatever the case may be or the, or monster tones um it's funny watching this rewatching this video too and it speed it up where i can kind of see like oh man the initial wash i put down on that monster say like that looked fine that looked good and then i went back in and three or four times and trying to touch it up and add detail and it kind of lost something you know like kind of in the same way like something feels kind of lost when i add color but there's also something that's gained you know it's like part you kind of lose some of the line quality that is really nice about a black and white drawing, but it's sort of like sacrificing it to have like that, the impact that color has. That's a, it's like a weird, uh, I don't know, balancing act kind of thing where it's like, well, how much am I, I don't want to overdo it and make it too muddy. I want to add enough color to where it's like doing the, you know, telling the story and looks nice, I guess, whatever. But that's the, uh, I think this is pretty much the finish here. I think, uh, that was the last video. Yeah, there we go. So that's the finished page after I scanned it. And then here I have a next one is the both pages together, six and seven, how they'll appear in the book. And that's the video this week. Thanks for watching. I got a Patreon too. If you want to subscribe to that, I'd love it. Bye.